This video is going to show you some different connections that can be made between math and geometry and art. If you're a math or geometry teacher, connect with your art teacher. They will be your media specialists and STEAM experts. And if you're an art teacher, you get to sit back and enjoy this different look at uh, connected art activities that maybe you want to incorporate into your practice. So this first idea is um, an altered book. And we can look at some math and geometry concepts through the altered book. So by um, chunking up the pages and then laying in different ideas through collage or drawing or painting, then students can kind of explore uh, different parts. We can talk about our um, shapes if we want to be very simple and have a page dedicated to triangles, circles, squares, ovals. Or we can do uh, more advanced ones like our forms from... Um, our spheres, cones, cubes, uh, stellated dodecahedrons, whatever. But there are certainly some math and geometry concepts that can be broken down uh, into different steps and an altered book is a fun way to kind of explore that. This next one, uh, we have a Calder style mobile and this uses cantilevered balancing. And I have a video that will be linked below that will show you how you can achieve this. So if students are studying certain forms, these um, different pieces on the ends of the sticks can be uh, made with those different forms. But anything that can be made in multiples and put on the end of a stick will work with this. So you can have uh, even math or geometry vocabulary on the end of stick and it's very um, uh, dynamic in its movement um, the way Alexander Calder would. So uh, it can be a fun way to kind of display stuff in your room, but also to have students explore concepts and get the idea of how to do cantilever balancing, which is kind of uh, unintuitive. Uh, once you see the video, it'll make sense, um, but it's, it's interesting how the movement of one small piece can really affect the, the whole sculpture. Another one, obviously, is snowflakes. And, you know, by making a six-sided snowflake, uh, we can learn about angles and do some measuring that way. We can give students a challenge, try to make a five-sided snowflake or a seven-sided snowflake and figure out what angles would be involved in that. So it can be a fun sort of exploration when you're playing with the idea of uh, angles, acute angles, obtuse angles, and all of that. Uh, playing with paper airplanes is a great way to not, uh, also explore um, about aerodynamics, um, but also with uh, shapes. And there are different kinds of shapes that will fly in different kinds of ways, and there's plenty of tutorials out there available to you. And then certainly taking the students out, we can measure how long they have flown. Uh, we can talk about what was the rise and run um, of different kinds of airplanes and different kinds of designs. Um, there are all sorts of concepts that can be done in real time uh, with paper airplanes, which can be an awful lot of fun. Here we have a playing card for a sports card, but they could also find a famous uh, mathematician um, and then do a little mini report on a card, print out a face, and then put some facts on the back, different concepts, Pythagorean's theorem, uh, you know, and this could be a fun way to kind of create trading cards. You can put the names in a hat and have students uh, go ahead and make the cards and then put them on display. Here we can explore crystalline sculptures, or crystalline forms. So by using acrylic straws or even regular drinking straws and pipe cleaners, um, you can use this stuff called 527 glue to hold it all together. And you can see this young man had a lot of fun with that. Um, by playing with different kinds of shapes, the students will explore how um, you, know, you can achieve some pretty rigid structures or others that tend to slide around. And why do we do that? Why does that you know, sort of happen? So uh, why is a triangle much stronger than a square? Um, so we can break apart these ideas and kind of play around with that. Uh, this next one, we can explore the idea of uh, maps and cartography. So you can use rulers in a lot of ways for this and measuring and dividing, um, taking a paper and dividing it into, you know, eight equal rows and ten equal columns. Um, there's a lot of opportunity for some measuring and they come up with a product that's an awful lot of fun if they create a treasure map. Here we have facial proportions, and obviously there's going to be a lot of measuring that can be involved in this. Students don't really realize that their eyes are halfway on their head and this other half is for their brain. So we often do drawings and the eyes are way too high in the head. Um, so by breaking things down, measuring their faces, and kind of doing a face map, you can have some fun with that. So uh, there's a lot of geometry in the human face and kind of exploring that can be a lot of fun. 
Fractals can be found in nature, and I do have a, um, a project that I'll link below on bonsai trees. And by using 56 wires or 81 wires, um, you can do some three-based or two-based fractals. And here's a fractal just as an example, but we know that trees are fractals because each branch looks like the whole. Um, here's a larger fractal sculpture that my students created that we put out on display uh, outside of our school building, uh, again with those acrylic straws. Origami is a fun way to kind of explore um, geometry, but I think a lot of people don't look at the possibility of opening up that origami and playing around with the angles. So here I've taken, you could see a photograph and then the actual uh, origami painting that was created on that. So students were given uh, rulers, compasses, and protractors to measure things out and try and recreate um, the folded design onto a canvas and then paint it. And then my advanced students tried to shade it in a similar way. So we printed it out in black and white and they had to pick four colors to color it in to emulate the idea of shadow but through color. Here's one for the origami bird and you can see its folded pattern here. Another fun one is units origami where you're doing little parts and putting them together. So this is representing a molecule. Um, and they can be put together to create larger geometric forms and then making even some connections to science. This one is a pattern that is created through a photocopier. So there's a neat way to cut paper and do a drawing and cut again and repeat it so you get an infinite number of uh, repeated patterns. This is the way that they do wallpaper designs on fabric. We're all familiar certainly with um, tessellations. Um, but this is another way to kind of approach it, and I'll have a link below to um, that particular lesson. This other one, we have a young man, um, I believe he's about eight years old, where he created these modules that can connect with every corner. And so students would do this out of cardboard, trace it, and turn it each time so that the pattern would repeat infinitely. Um, so we had some fun kind of exploring that part of it. And certainly doing drawings in perspective, like this student is doing in the hallway. Again, partnering with your art teacher, you can explore uh, perspective, receding lines, vanishing points, and all sorts of wonderful geometry concepts uh, through drawing. And then these students finish them off with some real, de some surreal details uh, as we studied Salvador Dali uh, and artists like him. Here, even on a simple level with our elementary students, they can take their name and explore one point perspective and get the idea of receding lines and the uh, illusion of depth. Here we have another one, and this is tessellations, the classic one. Instead of creating a full grid, I have students put one tessellation piece in the middle and then keep surrounding that until they run out of space. Um, it becomes a little less frustrating, but sometimes gridding is very important, so you may want to do a grid and then fit the tessellation pieces into the grid. Taking this outside, like this young lady did, can be another fun extension to this lesson and get some fresh air. Here we have another young man working on his tessellations. Another fun project is to take uh, a math or a geometry concept and working it into a comic strip. So in this particular one, it's actually a science-based one. The students came up with a character, and the character describes um, a situation. In this, um, in this example, it's actually the birth of the universe, but you could have the student explain a math or geometry concept through the comic strip. So that could be an all, a lot of fun. The last thing I could say here is that we could explore um, structure, um, and then we start moving into um, engineering. But I have students get these challenges where they're given three pieces of paper, uh, maybe six feet of tape, and they have to create towers. So this can be a fun way to kind of explore why is it that some structures work and some structures fail. Um, and this is just using, we can do copy paper or whatever paper is available to you and build structures. Um, and this can be a great way to kind of combine math, art, and engineering into a lesson. Well, if you found any of these interesting and you'd like to give them a try, please uh, like and subscribe these videos and check out some of the other ones in this playlist for some wonderful ideas on how to connect art with core content areas. Thank you.